All right, so today is going to be a little bit earlier start just because I'm excited and want to try and get as much done as possible in the time I have, which is, you know, more time than normal. Um, this is going to be a lot of stuff to do because I'm going to go over a bunch of different things. So I'm not sure like how on track I'll be to what the plan is. Um, for the most part, this rod, I think I've got like a little bit of winding to do, but it's going to be like on the back burner. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just get it out of here. What I'm doing right now, the plan, um, is for the three rods for my nieces. Um, that's going to be these three. And I've got the remaining parts um, that I'm going to be putting on. And then the rod for my brother. Um, so that's this one. That's the one I shaped the handle on. I do need to finish um, finish the end here um, so that it's smooth. There's a little bit of a catch right here on the cork. Um, you probably cannot see it, but it's there. Um, yeah, you can see it. Uh, so I'll be trying to shape that so it's flat across and doesn't have like an obvious edge to it. Uh, so that'll be one of those things. Um, I'll be arboring up to put the real seats on and then hopefully gluing them in place. You remember last time I was on I marked the um, points where the real seats end on all the rods and then where the um, top cork for the handle ends. Um, I have not marked all of those on my brother's rod because I had to, I wasn't sure where the real seat would actually end based on how the rod was being put together because it was slightly different. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and get started with this one. Um, actually, before I get started, I'm going to go back and we're going to go, because um, I keep talking about, you know, the history of the rod making and how, you know, my grandpa started it um, as like a first rod for for grandkids thing. Um, we're gonna go back to my brother's rod. Um, I think I had a piece of it at one point on here, um, but this is the original rod my grandpa made for my brother. Uh, it has three pieces, which are more than three pieces now because it broke. And this is the only one that's actually still whole. Um, so what he got was the handle, and this is actually the same cork um, that I've used on mine. Um, I don't particularly like the slide them together handle type um, for what I'm rod making. I may try and recoup those at some point. The handle you can see is well used, well loved. Um, I think my brother got this rod 25 years ago, something like that. I don't know. It's been a long time. Um, so my grandpa did not very decorative wrap, but he just did a little bit of wrapping right here. And then you can see he just started right in on the measurement part. Um, this section right here was actually a repair that he did. Um, I think the rod broke when he was winding it. Um, so you can't really see it, but like you can hear it. There's actually thread wrap in the finish here. Uh, from when he wrapped over this to try and do the repair. Uh, so the repair didn't last. The rod, I think, um, was left in the boat when we were pulling it out of the water and caught on something, and that's how it ended up getting snapped more. Um, so I'm using the same colors from this when I, when I actually make my brother's rod. Um, but you can see it goes, you know, right up. I think this is the six inch mark here. And then this one is the nine. And this one is the 12. And this one is starts at 15. I think this is a total of um, three inches. It looks short to me, but I think that was supposed to be a three inch section. Um, and then you'd be able to put the top of the rod into the ferrule. And the, the actual measurement part of it stopped after the that. But he had two pieces at the top, so this was the brake that was not repaired at all, was these two here. Um, so it broke here at the top, the tip fell off, broke off, and then it had another brake here. So this is the actual longer section. 
Uh, so he had the choice between a like five foot and a five and a half foot rod, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Might be four and four and a half. Four and a half and five. I don't remember. This piece is six inches longer when it's all assembled. And then this was the piece that's still left over. Um, it was really awesome to find it. Um, it's kind of sad that it is broken. Um, I'm looking at different ways that I can maybe repair it. It is split bamboo, um, so it's, you know, very flexible, um, has a lot of give. Um, and this rod tip will still be usable. So if I can repair the bottom, then the t rod tip will definitely still be usable. Um, the other tip I don't think can be repaired. Um, but that's a project for another day. Um, for today, I'm going to be working on putting the real seats in place. But, um, I'm going to screw this down as far as it'll go. Um, I'm going to make sure that this real seat stays centered on the rod so it doesn't shift sideways or something um, once it's on there. So to do that, I'm going to arbor up using the masking tape. Uh, this is going to be a little bit slow, a little bit long. Um, essentially what I'm trying to do is about a quarter inch from where the handle is. I'm just going to roll the tape on. And I'm just going to keep building it up on top of each other itself. I'm sorry, on top of itself to get as much volume as possible. I'm going to do this on all three rods in three locations. So I'm going to do it here, here, and then one in the middle just to help fill in some of that. And then I'm going to glue. Um, since I don't have to make any adjustments to the top of the uh, handle where the real seat is going to be held in place, all I have to do is just this and then we'll do that. I'm thinking I might actually run out of masking tape. That could be a bit of an issue. Um, if that's the case, I probably won't end the stream. I'll go out afterwards to get more masking tape and continue doing that later. Um, I'll probably go ahead and um, just switch over and keep doing the windings on um, the rod for my niece. So the difference between the rods for my nieces, so I keep saying I'm making rods for my nieces. Um, I'm really excited about that. That's what I'm doing is making the rods for my nieces. The difference between the rods for my nieces um, is that the set that I'm making, these ones with the cork handles are for the twin, they're from one sister and the other one is from the other sister. Hey Peach, how's it going? I just saw your note. I don't know like how long ago that was. Ah, just a minute. How are you doing? I'm glad you stopped by. Are you getting ready to play some Rust? I am having a great Sunday. This is one of my favorite things about Sundays that I get to get on and do the rod making. Um, I, I, it's one of the things I get to enjoy and you know primarily that's that's what I like. I like doing this more than I like gaming and the fact that there's actually a category for it that I can stream you know makes me feel really happy because I get to do what I love and, you know, keep doing what I like. Because I'm enjoying streaming. I'm enjoying that a lot, actually. Uh, they're going to be for just general fishing. They're, they're first rods for my niches. Um, so there are going to be um, spinning reels. Um, because it's a simpler way to get kids started. Um, and it's mostly going to be for... I think they call them flathead or, or panfish, um, bluegill, crappie, um, and maybe they'll be good enough for some bass fishing, um, but we'll see. Uh, that's going to be one of those things that um, it'll depend on where we end up going fishing. Mostly we've taken the girls bluegill and crappie fishing, so they haven't gone bass fishing yet. Um, they're fairly lightweight rods, so they're not going to be great for lures, but for live bait, um, they should be okay. So we can run them with a four to six pound line, um, but it's really going to depend on, you know, the, the reels. I'm not doing the reels. I'm just making the rods. The reels is going to be on mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or one of the other aunts or uncles to figure out um, 
which reels are going to work best. I know my brother-in-law, uh, for the rod that it's almost done, um, he's already looking at reels to get for his daughter. Um, I don't know what the plan is for the other sister. Um, I think she vaguely knows that I'm working on these, but um, I haven't talked with her too much about it. And it's really great because the kids keep coming up and going, we're pretty big into it. Um, it's it's one of the things my dad really enjoys. Um, we actually, that's why I didn't stream on where I was last weekend. I was fishing. Um, we did a float down the river near us. A pretty big, pretty prominent river. Um, I got sunburned. It was great. Um, we didn't catch much because we got a, a late start, but um, there's certain seasons where it, it is fun to go fishing, but it's it's a really great way to get outside and be doing something while you're not away. Like you can get, get away and, and there's no pressure to it. Um, we don't do like a whole lot of sport fishing or um, competitive fishing or something like that. Um, it's mostly just, you know, we'll, we'll eat what we catch if we catch anything, um, or we'll release it because it's, it's literally just to get out of the house and it really is like a nice day kind of a thing. So, um, we're, we're, I would say we are kind of, I guess, I guess we are kind of big into it. Um, but it's kind of like a family tradition to, to make the first rod. Well, not the first rod, the little trainer rods are kind of like easy but like adult lifelong rod it's like a family tradition to make the rod um so that's what i'm doing um, my dad hurt his back recently and has been in and out of work a little bit um and he's not as steady as he used to be uh so where normally he would be the one because it's grandpa's job to make the rods um he's been showing me how and Gave me enough knowledge that I'm able to do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this on his behalf. I'm actually using a lot of his materials. Um, a lot of the threads came from him. Um, the reamers that I've been using came from him. Um, the finishes I got for myself because his were a little old. Um, let's see if that's good. I think that might be too much. So we're gonna slide this down and just check to see. Yeah, that's too much. So now I gotta take some of this off because I just got carried away. I don't want it to go to waste, so I'll probably wind it on higher up. Stick it on the table. Let's check again. There we go. Okay, that's good. So that actually makes it nice and even. And it's not too tight, not too loose. It doesn't wiggle around, so that works. And then where's my mark right here? So about an eighth inch down. We'll do an eighth inch since so we're kind of tight on there. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I'm like, this is one of my, my, my big projects. Um, the girls' birthdays are next month. Um, and the goal is to have them finished by birthdays. Um, the girls keep coming up and they're like, oh, for my birthday, I want this. It's so cute that they're like making lists. They've, they've figured out how to make lists. So they're like, I want this from this person and this from that person and this from that person. They know now not to ask me for anything because I'm working on something super special for them. Um, I don't think they quite grasp what that means because they'll still come up and they'll be like are you doing because i sell too they're like are you making barbie clothes are you making barbie clothes again because that's what i gave them for christmas last year so now they're all telling me oh i want this color dress for this barbie and this color dress for that barbie and can you make this for skipper and i don't know what all the other new chelsea and all the different like barbie types are but <laughs> they're all asking um what color I'm doing and whatnot. And, you know, I'm asking them colors because I kind of want to make sure that I'm following their their preferences. Um, so it's it's really cute that they keep asking. And I'm, I'm so ex I am so excited. It's not even, like, an exaggeration to say, like, I am hyped. Um, so I'm probably, since I am getting close on time, I'm probably going to do more um, 
rod making than um, game playing. Um, so we'll get that done. But yeah, I'm I'm super excited about it. And I'm there we go. I hate that it does that. Like I know the rod tapers gradually, but it should be fairly close to even across like that was that three quarters inch space in there. So the great thing is I have the other arbor that I can use as a reference point to know how much to arbor up. I don't know. Do the real seats taper? I don't think the real seats taper that much. I think they're pretty solid. So we'll see how that works. Um, get to keep working on this and making it and see how it goes. So I know this isn't as fun as all the actual rod windings because there's not as much decoration to it. So um, I'm still enjoying it. We'll see how it goes. This one just really wants to twist around. I'm not liking it. Why does it keep doing that? What the heck is it doing? It's making itself difficult. That's what it's doing. Now it's staying kind of even. here. See that doesn't look like enough. So I don't want to overdo it again because there's only so much tape will hold. I have to remember to make sure I've got my cleaning stuff <laughs> next time before I start doing the epoxy. So, last weekend, <laughs> I went fishing with my folks. So the tape does, you know, that's a really good question. Um, it's not really a way to prevent the tape from getting wet. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using it just to make like a, a, a barrier there. Um, so it will end up getting wet if the whole rod gets submerged, which is not really great because the cork will get wet as well. Um, but the glue, or epoxy that I'm using is a two-part epoxy that pretty much creates a watertight seal. Um, and then it, it, I coat the tape before I put the real seat on. So the whole thing will be coated. Um, and since the real seat is blocked on either side by the cork with, that is used with the same epoxy, even if it does get wet, um, the tape may break down a little bit, but the epoxy will kind of, you know, obviously creates some of that seal um, and help um, prevent it from, you know, getting to be a disaster if it does get wet. Um, but that's a really good question though. I never even thought of that because it's just how it's done. Um, I, I, honestly, that's, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Uh, masking tape, obviously, I feel think um, is one of those tapes that loses its um, stickiness if it gets wet, but I think it kind of when it dries out gets sticky again, kind of like, um, kind of like the, the envelope glue. Like if you get it wet, it gets sticky and if it dries out, it, it gets, you know, it stays stuck and then it gets wet again and it gets loose and then it'll dry out and be sticky again. Um, so even if it does get wet, once it gets dried, it's okay. Um, but that's a very good question. <laughs> yeah, 
I haven't done, uh, well I do stuff all the time because it's like one of my favorite things to do. That is amazing! Yeah, it's, it's great when you get to go back to that. So <laughs> I have, the whole reason why my computer is actually in my brother's office is because my room has two desks. One is my art desk and one is my sewing desk. And then I've got my table, which is the general all around um, table. And the computer just wouldn't fit um, with all of the, the projects that I get going. Um, and I, you know, I try to keep them like back and forth, but that's amazing. I love that you get to do that. Do you still make clothes or do you um, not have as much time as you did or... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to ask that. Do you, do you still do it? Um, have you done it recently? No crafts now? None! <laughs> Just not the patience. So the kids, kids' school projects, so that's a great way to uh, learn stuff. Um, <laughs> I clean up after. I just shove everything into a trash can. I'm like, I don't want to clean this. I don't want to worry about having to do this later. I really don't. I, I take actually like really good care of as much of my stuff as I can because um, I know that it's not not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> All straight A's. Oh, you have a craft project? Okay. So the fun thing is um, I was homeschooled so I didn't actually end up having like school projects like that. But we did like pretty much anything and everything um, because my mom wanted us to be creative and, and, and make our own stuff. So like all the Christmas presents we gave to everybody were all, you know, homemade different things like that. Um, and it was great. I, I really do enjoy sewing. I might do a sewing one, but I just like the, I don't know. I kind of don't want to just because the sewing machine is so loud once you get it running, that it'll just drown out anything and everything if I'm trying to talk. Um, that being said, I do have a really nice machine, so it's not as loud as all that. I've worked with some machines that are literal nightmares. Um, because I had a hand-me-down sewing machine, but... That's awesome. So, you have, what, two kids? That's a good idea. Right now I do have the music playing. I have it going th so it's supposed to come through this, the um, microphone instead of the computer speakers. Because the last time I had it through the computer speakers, <laughs> it kind of killed the microphone. <laughs> so like the whole time I did a stream, it was just music. That might be just a little bit too tight. I might take off a little bit. I think that'll work. I'm going to take off just a little bit on this one. Probably about a layer. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. All right, so that's one. One down, two to go. Two, yes, 11 and eight. Okay. Uh, oldest is a girl. Do you have a girl and a boy or two girls or? I want to say I think you have a son because I think you've mentioned him. So I don't want to assume. Um, but. Yeah. So do you have any kind of like special things you do that's just for them or like in kind of family traditions? Like kind of like how we're doing this with the rods is the family tradition, but we're breaking from tradition a little bit.
No family traditions. That's kind of sad. But you can make them. Traditions aren't hard to make. The... I guess it doesn't really count as a tradition if you're making it, but it, it can. Like, it can pass on. I, I, I would love to have, like, more family traditions. And, like, holding to old traditions or weird traditions, like, like out of the norm. Like, making the first fishing rod. Fishing rods are so easy to get. You can just walk in to even, like, a Walmart or... I think, I don't know, Target doesn't have really too much of a sporting goods section, but any sporting goods store and just pick up a fishing rod and hit the water. Um, and it's so simple and easy, but there's just something about the love and care that's gone into a, a hand-wound rod. Um, I wouldn't even say that it makes it more sturdy or usable in any way. Um, the only thing that like makes ours good is that it's got the it's got the the ruler on it um that makes it unique from pretty much anything you could get <laughs> yes yes <laughs> no you'd want them to use it so it's 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 literally just made to be used if i was you know concerned about like how it was being used like okay so we'll go back to my brother's rod that i, I had earlier i don't know if you were watching at that point but um it got broken it's the first rod my grandpa made him. We still have it. I don't, he hasn't used it in years because it got broken. But it was like part of, part of what it was. Um, and that I'm using the colors from it to make him a new rod. He's already got a nice little rod that he uses all the time now. Um, so it's just going to be his second rod. So we'll, he'll have that second rod now, and it'll be reminiscent because I'm using the color scheme from his first rod. Um, I was going to take his rod apart and use the uh, little handle piece, the seats here, and he said no. He doesn't want the, the um, real seats, um, this type of real seat. He'd prefer like a traditional new age real seat, but he, like, it, it hasn't lost its meaning just because it's not usable anymore. So we, we still have it. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, I, there's so many rods, fishing rods, in my dad's basement that are the same kind of a thing because um, we're just keeping them because the, they have value more than just to fish. And that and they have different uses. Um, so one kind of rod that like we haven't really played around with much my dad doesn't fly fish um so we don't really have fly fishing or fishing rods um i think he might have one that he just inherited from his dad um but we don't i don't know how to fly fish um it looks like a lot of work to me you know keep making it float over the water and you have to be over a certain kind of water and i don't really know like much about fly fishing so I don't know how I don't know much about it um I'm not that I'm not interested in learning I think it could be cool but for now we're just sticking with what we got um and I've already got um I've got a commission for another rod because you know fishing is it rod is a forever thing pretty much it doesn't matter like this is I guess why I'm making these ones it's a forever rod for my nieces um they're going to be able to use it for ages to come. Oh, that is perfect right there. Uh oh, so they're six and seven. Uh, so they'll be able to use these for years to come. Um, the rod that my dad uses right now needs repair. <laughs> Um, it's one of those fun things, like, having having made a rod, you know a little bit about rod making, but um, apparently the uh, seal that he used for his winding didn't really last. Um, it started flaking away, and then the whole winding came off, so he, like, he just took it off. So now he's got, like, a little bit of winding at the bottom, and then a little bit of winding up here, and then the ruler goes on from there. It's really funny, because it just looks bare. Um, but... It was, it was, it was the sealant that he used just didn't work or last. 
Uh, so it wasn't just the decorative winding. It ended up being one of his um, guides came loose too. And he was out on the water when it happened. And he just took what he had on hand, which happened to be electrical tape that he had for his motor, his boat motor. So he's got a rod that just has a guide that's held on by a electrical tape. Um, and it, it still works, it's st still in use. I keep telling him, you know, you can, you can fix that real quick. It's not that hard. Um, and I don't know, he, he, he showed me how, he knows how. It, it's just really funny that that's, that's the rod he uses, one of the rods he uses the most, actually. Um, this, you know, trusty old rod that's not as good as it once was, but, I mean, it still catches fish just fine. It just doesn't quite look like it used to. Um, so I think it's a his and hers rod, um, because my mom has a rod that's very similarly colored. Um, my dad, you know, they switch back and forth. It's so funny because, uh, my mom is from a family with all girls. Um, and her dad was kind of a motorhead. So they didn't do a lot of like sporty stuff. Um, so I, th I think her introduction to fishing came from my dad. And, uh, so she's still a little wary of, you know, doing the, the live bait or unhooking fish or whatnot. So essentially what happens is she gets a fish, she reels it in, and then she hands the rod to my dad. And while he's unhooking it, because his rod's still out, she takes his rod. So they pretty much just do like an even trade. Here's a fish, take it off, <laughs> let me have your rod. What ends up happening is, no matter whose rod it is, mom catches the fish. <laughs> dad unhooks it. Um, he, I will say my dad is a great sport. Um, and I think that's what made fishing so fun for us. He doesn't get excitement out of making the catch. He gets excitement out of somebody's excitement. So you're reeling the fish in. He's like, you got it. You got it. And he's going to encourage you the whole way. Come on. That's it. That's it. All right. Now keep the rod tip up. You know, all of it, which is really great because that's what he's using, like that energy to help, you know, teach my nieces how to fish. And I, like, I got to go down with them to the water and it is so great. There's no criticism. There's no, oh, you got the little fish. You got the big fish. You got a different fish. You're holding the, it's, it's just straight up energy from him. Uh, you, you got it. You got it. You got it. All right. Now bring it here. Let me get it. All right. I'll get it set up for you. We're going to do the next rod. You know, we'll get the next, we'll get the next one. Um, so they're, you know, slightly competitive with each other. Well, she caught more fish than me, you know. Oh, kids do because they always they always keep count um, of stuff like that. Um, but but my dad is the best because he did that with us. He he take us to fishing holes. And he's like, this is a hot spot. I've been here before. I know it's good. Um, so we're gonna take everybody out to the hot spot, and we're gonna have some fun. So he starts by getting everybody else's rods set up. And then he starts working on his rod. And there's been times where I don't think he's even put a, a rod in the water. A line in the water. Because, you know, he'll, he'll start working on it and get the next one. Like, the fish, you know, somebody will catch a fish and then he's going to unhook it. Um, and that's pretty much how we learn to do our own. Um, my eldest sister, because we'd have to wait in line. There were four of us. <laughs> if, if if it was a really hot spot, there'd be like three people with a fish at once. And my eldest sister was like, well, I'm not going to keep waiting for dad. And mom wasn't unhooking the fish. So that was about it. We, we you know, have to start learning on our own. And she she's the first one. She just started unhooking fish. Um, and then, you know, of course, all of us are like, well, if she can do it. Um I'll say I was probably a little bit more independent than my second sister. That's a little loose. Is that loose? Yeah. That'll fill in with glue. That should be okay. Yeah. Let's see it. Maybe one more wrap. 
I'm a little bit more independent than my second sister. She was ready to, to go. So it goes, I have two older sisters and then a younger brother. So there's four of us. And uh, that was that was pretty much how it worked. We we just do everything um, in line. Um, and essentially what, what happened with, I'll say this with the fishing. Um, my eldest sister pretty much taught herself how to unhook the fish. My second sister was like, well, that's doing it, so we're good. That might be tight now. That's good, though. And then I was like, well, if Elizabeth can do it. <laughs> um, and I think my brother kind of started doing it around the same time, but he's he's also, you know, the baby. Uh, so it was okay to baby him. So there's, there's so many fishing stories. So this past weekend we went fishing. It was just me and my mom and dad. Um, so what they were trying to do right around our 18th birthday is just take us all on a, a, either a half day or a full day float. Um, it's a six mile stretch of river and you get an early start and you just go out for the day. Um, half day float can be, I think there's another section of the river that you can put in it and it ends up being about two miles. Um, so that's what we do for the half day float is just a shorter section of river. Um, it doesn't take that long to float down, but what we'll do is we'll anchor at the hot spots and and just fish them for a little while. Um, so this past weekend, on, on, on the 4th of July, actually, on, on last Sunday, um, I wasn't rod making. I was actually out fishing. And it was a lot of fun because we got in there and, uh, well, we got a late start. We had some <laughs> car troubles. We had to buy a new battery and put that in, and then we didn't have the tools, so we had to go back and buy the tools. So we, luckily we broke down, like, across the street from a Walmart, so we were able to get everything fairly easy. Um, and then, you know, get going on the road again. But it ended up delaying the fishing trip by a couple hours. Uh, so where normally we would have gotten started at, like, 7 o'clock in the morning, we didn't get in on, on the water until 10. Uh, so it ended up, you know, being later and the people who were out for just for fun, I think there was a group of like four boats um, and only one or two of them had people that were fishing on them. Everybody else was just paddling around or floating around for fun. We were on the water at the same time and when, you know, there's that many people on the water, the fish get scared. Um, so nothing against them. They had fun. We had fun. Um, I think each of us caught one fish. So it really wasn't that busy of a day. Uh, and still, we were out there till like 3 in the afternoon. And it was an awesome day. Like, even without catching anything, it was still so much fun. Um, so it was one of the first times I went down with a double rod setup. Most of the time I just have one rod and I switch back and forth between live bait and lures. Um, with a double rod, I can keep one set with the live bait. And then one that has the lure set up. So it's easy to switch back and forth without, you know, overwhelming myself and tying knots and losing so much line because I keep redoing it again and again. Uh, so that that was that's what I did. I had it set up like that, and um, I wasn't getting any hits on the live bait. I don't think we were. I don't think anybody really was. No. Um, so we. So my dad's um, depth finder. GPS fish finder combo thing. Um, he has it set so when we catch a fish he can say this is a good spot um, and we'll know like this is a hot spot on the river but it wasn't working um, so he couldn't say this is where the hot spot is. So we just had to guesstimate um, based on how many times we've been down the river and uh, so we stopped where we thought it was and we ended up floating right well, actually we ended up motoring right over the hot spot and then you know having to go back upstream so we could cast down river and let the lines float out. Um, it was fun. It just like all the little things that happen that make it a story worth telling. Um, so we, we ended up going back up and um, tossing the, the uh, anchors out so that we could fish at the, the hot spot, which ended up not being a hot spot. Um, we mostly go bass fishing. Um, so we're looking for smallmouth bass in the river. It really was. It really was. It was <laughs> It was one of those days that was so messed up it was just perfect anyway. 
think that might be too tight. So um, we stopped at the hotspot and let the, we did live bait, uh, minnows, we did minnows. And uh, oh, that's not right. Didn't catch anything for like a little while and uh, just about the time my dad's like, okay. Pull in the anchor, we're gonna head on down, we'll go to the next hot spot. My mom caught a bass. So we're she's reeling it in. And the funny thing is, like, I'm sitting in the middle of the boat. Uh, my dad's on the front where we've got the trolling motor, and my mom's at the back. So she reels it in, and then she has to pass the fish <laughs> up the boat <laughs> so my dad can get it off. Um, I think I ended up taking it off. I think I spent more time. I think I spent more time helping my mom with fish than, than my dad did that time. This past trip. Um, getting the stuff on and off just because of where we were situated in the boat. I suppose I should have probably sat at the back of the boat. Uh, so that mom could, you know, be next to dad and have that. But it was just kind of the way it was situated. So, you know, I was helping out what I could. And uh, it was really fun. So she got the first fish and it was probably about 11 inches um, and the slot limit is 11 inches so it was like right on the line we couldn't keep it um so you know we tossed it back and then I forgot what my dad caught he caught the next thing um she caught that on a minnow and then my dad caught his on a grub I think um what happened was we'd keep getting these hits on the lures so we're tossing lures out and the fish are like, oh, that looks good. And they'd come up and they'd hit it, but they wouldn't like bite it enough to actually reel them in. I think I had three really good hits. Um, one of them actually fought its way off because I actually had it on and it was about a few feet, probably about six to eight feet out from me. Um, when it did like a little flip and lost the tension and the hook came loose and that was it. Um, but it was really funny because they, they'd keep hitting it. And what had happened is I was, re yeah, I was using a Rapala. Um, it's, I, I, I have like two favorite, uh, floating, I guess, um, lures. So grub sink straight up. And that's what my dad was using. My mom had a grub on one too. So three of us, six rods. Six rods? Might have been seven rods. I don't remember. I know I had two, and Dad brought an extra rod for Mom, and then he had a, a casting rod as well as his spinning rod. I think it was just six rods. Um, Mom started using a grub. I don't think she caught anything, but she had a couple of hits. We snagged the bottom. I don't think we actually lost any lures, which is like one of the biggest things we do. We'll cast into the reeds or something and just be like, well, that one's gone. Um or get caught on a log or whatnot. But it was really fun because, um, like, what would happen is <laughs> I'd be reeling it in, and I've got a Rapala. And this thing is, like, four and a half, five inches long, about like that. And it's got two hooks, one on the back and one on, in the middle. And they're both the treble hooks. Um, and it's got this, like, wedge on the front of it. Like, like, I don't know, I can't really describe it. You'd have to know what, what it is. Essentially what it does is it creates like a little diving point. So it's a floating lure. And then when you reel it, that wedge catches the water and makes it dive. Um, and then you stop reeling and it goes and floats back up. Um, and then to, it try to get, you know, shift the water off of it and get the best um, whatever, what it's called, airflow, water flow. Um, so it it does like this little thing like that while it dives. It does like a nice little wobbly wiggly thing while it's diving. And uh, 
So what would happen is, like, every time I'd, I'd reel it and it'd dive, just about when it floated up to the surface, it'd pop out of the surface because there was a fish trying to come up and hit it. Um, so they were really interested in it. And I was like, this is good! But they never actually took it. I guess it, um, I kind of figured out why it later is because it was mostly little fish. When I say little fish, the Rahal is four and a half inches long and it's being chased by a six inch fish. <laughs> it's ridiculous because the lure is as big as the fish. <laughs> and they're like, I'm going to eat it! And they can't even get the hook. Um, so they pop it out of the water and then go diving back down like, oh no, I didn't get it. Um, so I, I saw them get close a couple of times. And it was just, it's it's so fun because like, they they don't have any clue. They're just little fish. Um, and then those, I think my dad caught one that was about like that six or seven inches. Um, but we floated down and then it got, I think his was seven or eight inches actually. So we got to the, the wading part. There's a part in the river where there's like a, a whole row of rocks. Um, so the river was up and it wasn't as much of a row because they, some of them were buried. Um, but we'd get out, we, we, throw the anchor, drop the boat between the rocks, and we stand on them and fish on the downriver side of the rocks. Because the current starts getting a little strong right there, and, and it, you know, the fish try and chill out right in the, the area and catch whatever comes down with the current. Because, you know, if it's in the, caught in the current, it's probably a weaker fish. Easy prey. So that's, that's usually a great place to fish. You just drop a line in, and they snap it up. So I, th I think we were at the waiting part. I know there I got at least two fish. That was the one where I got it on and it, it flipped off. Um, that's one of the reasons why they tell you to keep tension on the line and be ready. Because if you don't have enough tension, then when the fish flips, it'll flip and the, the um, lure will come right out. Um, and that's what happened. He flipped and got away. Oh my gosh, really? That's just too tight. Uh, my dad, dad caught his fish right there in that section. Uh, so it was a nice, nice little section right there. Um, oh no. Uh, so that's, that's where we stopped. We ate lunch there, um, and then went on down and, uh, it was fun. Um, so basically once we got to that point, my mom was like, it's, it's getting later in the day. We've been out here for a couple hours. We got a late start. We'll, we'll just call it a day. Not, not really catching anything. Um, so we decided to call it a day and just motor on down to the pullout point. And, uh, so we're, we're floating on down and, uh, I was just like, well, you know what? I'll drop my, I'll drop my lure in. It's the floating one, so it's not going to get, like, snagged on the bottom or have too much trouble or anything like that. Um, and let it, you know, drag behind the boat while we're going, and that'll make it dive and and be what it's supposed to do is what it's supposed to do. Catch the fish's attention or whatever. Um, so we were at a part, point in the river where it actually divides and there's an island. So we were going down the one side of the island. Um, and it's funny because we always go down the left side of the island. We never go down the right side. Um, the right side tends to be flatter and shallower. Um, I mean, guess technically they're probably close to the same depth, but because the right side is so wide, um, it's slower. And the left side seems to be just a little bit faster, which is, I guess, a, a, a little weird anomaly, I guess, with rivers. The one side that's narrower will be faster than the other side. Uh, so we were going down the fast side. And... Um, I think my dad had to pull the um, trolling motor out because we were in a shallow section. And I was like, well, we're going slow enough. So I cast the line out and uh, it, you know, landed and it, you basically don't do anything with the lure until the ripples stop because the fish will recognize it as something that just hit the water and won't be attracted to it. Um, so just about the time the ripples stopped, my dad got the motor, the trolling motor back in so we could keep going. Um, so I was like, well, I guess I don't need to really reel or anything. And so we start going down the river. 
and the thing just like as soon as the line goes taut from our momentum not anything else the lure does this little dive thing and I get a hit right on right away um, reel it in and you know my dad stops trolling because we can't keep going down the river while we're trying to reel in a fish and it's fighting it'll make the fight harder and I get it in <laughs> It's a five inch bass. Literally, you hold it up next to the lure. It's like difference of this much. I don't know how we managed to get a bite on it. It was so funny. Cause it was so tiny. In comparison, like there's there was barely any difference between the fish and the lure. Um, but because it is a treble hook, I'm still not comfortable with those. They tend to catch more of the fish when you start trying to unhook them. Um, so I was like, Daddy! So, you know, he got to unhook my fish that time. And that was it. We each caught one fish. A whole day of fishing. I think five hours out there. And, uh, one fish. But it was still, it was still a great day. We got to, you know, sit and talk uh, about, you know, what's going on with us. And, uh, hang out. Have some family time. Uh, so that was, it was really, a, it was, it was one of those experiences. Um, and then you get the stories. The fishing stories. So I'm sure the fish will get bigger or smaller as the tail goes on. Because <laughs> when it's the same size as your lure, <laughs> it just isn't big. <laughs> and you can't say it's a big fish. Um, I did see a gar. Um, gar are terrifying fish if you've never seen them. They look like half fish, half alligator. They have like a beak and they have teeth um, and they're terrifying, like terrifying looking. I want to see if I can find a picture of one because you just, you don't want to catch them. <laughs> we, my sister caught one one time and um, yeah. Well, there's some pretty big pictures of them. So they kind of look like this. They're not that bad looking. But you can see over here, he's got like the little snout and it goes like that long before it goes in. So that's not that bad. That's what they look like in the water. <laughs> um, but yeah. This is this is what their mouth looks like once they've got the lure. <laughs> you don't want that on your boat. <laughs> Look like an alligator fish. So, hey, crispy, we're making fishing rods. So, and looking at fish because why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, we spotted one, and then we're like, yeah, we're not fishing in that hole today. <laughs> Because gar are terrifying. So. I'm just working on making fishing rods for my nieces. Are you, uh, are you doing the same kind of a uh, game day as normal? Or are you going to be doing some other stuff? Okay, so that definitely needs a little bit more. It's a little loose. So. Basically, I'm doing the fun stuff that requires glue. Um, right now I'm arboring up the reel seat so it'll stay centered on the rod. Um, and then I'm going to be gluing them in place and I'm working on three rods. This is actually the third one. Uh, so there's not much more to do on that. Um, and then I'm going to go back to rod winding. Uh, so I've got the, the fourth rod is a couple of steps ahead. And uh, I'll be working on uh, finishing that off to get to the point to finishing that off. Um, so just some more rod winding on that, and then should be able to keep going. That's still loose. It feels like it should be right there, but it's still just a little bit loose. It does look like I will have enough masking tape to do all, all of them, though. So that's good news. I don't have to make any trips later to get more.
pretty much just talking, talking the day away. Actually, I need some water now because I've been talking. <laughs> oh, one of those fun things that happens. I'm trying to think of like the best fishing story. And the ones I have aren't like the big fish stories. They're the little fish stories. Um, we When we get fish that are um, mostly largemouth when we're lake fishing, uh, my parents have a little pond on the back of their property. So when we get some largemouth fish, I think we've thrown a couple bluegills in there. Oh yeah, that's good. That's right and tight. That's just what we need. Um, and then they throw some bass in there. You know, they're trying to stock their own pond. It sounded like my brother. <laughs> I, had to, I had to, well, I started my stream early, um, but I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to start it. I was going to do an extra hour, so I was going to start at 1 and go to 4 instead of 2 to 4. Um, I started around 1.30 because uh, my brother was weed eating when I was going to start, and I was really loud. I was like, yeah, we'll let it go. Um, but he literally was talking about making a shopping list and getting out to go get the groceries for the week. You're going to start a catfish pond? Dude, our pond was filled with catfish when we first got it. Um, when we first got the property, not the pond, because obviously we didn't just buy a pond. <laughs> um, when we moved out there, uh, it's a little tiny pond and it's surrounded by trees. So it's always got like a whole bunch of debris in it and it's very shallow. So it's like full of lily pads. Um, my uncle got the bright idea to drain the pond and um, clear out some of the lily pads. Uh, so to do it, what we what he did was he got a board, um, and I think he put like Coke bottles on it or something to make it float. Um, and then he took three hoses and he tied them to the board. And then he took the end of the hose over the, the dam uh, so that it would, you know, drain out over that and the hose would go down as the water dent went down. You're building your own. Don't put lily pads in it. Do not put lily pads in it. They're impossible to control. Unless you do it in like a deep area, but um, lily pads grow in like three to six feet of water. I think, no, three to four feet. I don't know. But um, you'd have to put them on like a post in a bucket in 10 feet of water to keep them from spreading. But anyway, um, when, when, you, when we got the pond down to the deep parts, there's this, the pond itself is probably 30 to 40 feet across. And it's roughly three feet deep all the way around, except for about a 10 foot section in the middle that's about 10 to 15 feet deep. Um, so when it got down to that, um, the, it turns out there was about well, hundreds of catfish in the pond. <laughs> Little six inch catfish. I think it was literally just one brood that started. Um, I don't like catfish. They're no fun to catch. You despise fishing? <laughs> you have to, you have to go at the right time of year. Um, like for us, um, one of the best times of years is to go crappie fishing at, during the spawn because they're all right up at the surface. I don't think they come too close. Well, they, I mean they go too shallow water, but I don't think they bed. Bluegills bed, um, and during the spawn that's fun too. Um, but like crappie fishing, that you'll catch fish like that because they're right up there for the spawn. So how are you going to get them out if they're for food? Do you like fish them out or do you like net them out or like, I don't quite know how that works. How much? Okay. Well, let's, let's rewind. How much do you have? Like, are you, how are you going to seed them? You don't like fishing either. What? How can you not like fishing? Okay. You guys clearly have never got a good bass on the line. You can just net, like, net across. Okay, that makes sense. I haven't built it yet. How big is it going to be, though? <laughs> Fishing 
teaching is not a waste of time. It is not a waste Well, okay, yes, it is totally a waste of time. It's the best kind of waste of time. Because sometimes you get a good fish and it's fun. Sometimes it's literally just... A, a, a sawyer? I'm not sure what that is. I'm not familiar with the term. But no, like, I love fishing because it, it's, you know, you get away. You get away. You get to be out on the water. And if you get bored of fishing, you can always go swimming if you're in a good boat. And there have been times when we do that. Um, a spear. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> dude, that would be so much fun. I haven't been spear fishing. That would be fun, though. I could see myself doing that. No, I like, <laughs> I like, I like fishing for like the sporty fish. Catfish, I don't like catching on a fishing rod um, because it feels like you snag the bottom. They're big and slow and heavy. So it just feels like you're dragging in a log or something. So they're not fun to fish. Um, so if that's what you're catching, I can imagine not liking fishing. Um, bass are fun. Because they will take your line and they'll be like, later! And you've got to fight to bring them in. They, they'll they fight you the whole way. Um, and then sometimes they'll give up and you're like, oh, I'm getting him, I'm getting him. And then you don't know if you, you lost him or if he's still on the line or, or how it's going to go. So they're the most fun. They're the, they're the most fun to catch. Um... But, you know, we, we eat what we catch or, you know, we, we do, we, we'll put it this way. We don't try and just fish for too much sport. So this, this rod, what I'm doing right now, it has like a little catch on the end here. Um, and I'm trying to tape it down so it doesn't catch and peel back further. It's going to be hidden by the joint. So I'm not that worried about it. And I'll probably put a little something on there to hold it in place. The next town over is named after a sport fish. Okay, so that does sound intriguing. Uh, you, you, if you got a lot, then that would be fun. Like I said, I don't do any like competitive fishing. I just, you know, a little bit here and there during the like, like the right seasons. But bass is the best thing to catch. I think if we've been trout fishing, and they're kind of fun, but they're river fish, so they're not as uh, deep uh, so it's easy to bring them in um, lake fishing is so so uh, you gotta you gotta get the right fish for me oh, like bass is the best so largemouth bass in lakes and smallmouth bass in rivers um, and smallmouth bass no matter how shallow the river is they'll fight you the whole way uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna let you down easy um, so they'll they'll uh they'll they'll make you work for it which is a lot of fun okay so uh now it's time for the glue and before i get started i gotta make sure i've got the cleanup stuff so i'll be right back uh... Alright, essentially I've just got to get alcohol nearby because it breaks down the resin. Uh, now I'm doing three at once, so I can use a little bit more. Jigging? I, I mean, that could be it. I um, There is a kind of fish, well, it's jigging with a J, jig fishing, um, where you where you drop it over the edge of the fish and then you just like bounce the rod. Um, and it's called jigging the lure. Uh, and I've done that. That's a lot of fun. I'm looking at it going, that's so much. Yeah, 
Well, I mean, if you get a fish, you know you got a fish, because it's not coming in. So I take it you don't go fishing too much, you're just building the pond for the food. Do you, do you eat fish a lot? frogs oh i've never been frog fishing either i have never eaten frogs i don't think i would want to try um just the sound of frogs legs doesn't sound appealing to me um i don't know so i mean like it, it there's so much to do there's so many different things like i can see why it's a big sport thing just because there's so much of it um, I've also never done ocean fishing. Um, my dad has a couple of ocean rods and he talks about ocean fishing. Um, and it sounds like it would be a lot of fun, but it also sounds like I would probably end up getting seasick because I don't do too well with waves and whatnot. Um, and, you know, to get good ocean fishing, you'd have to either be on a good beach with a really long rod, which I probably couldn't handle because of the weight. Or you have to be out on a boat. And I wouldn't say that being out on the boat is bad. Uh, but I think the ocean waves would probably throw me off a little bit. Because I'm used to the little tiny boats. And if you're on the wrong size boat, it it just doesn't work that well. So, we got the epoxy going. And it does... Looks like it's mixing really well this time. I think last time I did it, I had like little lumpies in it. But this one seems to just be like really well incorporated, which I'm really happy about. Um, but it'll hold regardless, so. Uh, we're gonna go back to this one because it's the one that I just finished. And. You know, I'm gonna layer it on. I'm gonna coat the tape as thick as we can to get a nice seal. Um, and we're going to coat all pieces of it. And then we'll try and fill in the gap with some epoxy there as well. And we got to get this piece of tape too. made a mess in my hand. So let's slide this down. So what it's going to do is going to build up and run off, which is perfectly fine because uh, I build it nice and tight, but I want it to kind of fill in the gap down below. Okay, that's going to just drop there. There we go. Try and take it around and let it fill in that gap a bit. There we go. Let it drop off some more. So I have to be very careful because I managed to get it on like four of my fingers. <laughs> uh, so that's why I'm holding it really funky because I don't want to spread the glue onto the cork and make it look not so great. Um, that is going to happen regardless though because of the thickness right here. Come on, don't do that. 
So we'll take it off as best we can. And now I'm going to lay that across. I'm going to try and scrape off as much of the glue as I can because I do need it as much as I, I can get for the next couple. Uh, so I'll try and recuperate this by scraping it off instead of just cleaning it. Um, but we do need to clean it as well. So let me get my alcohol here. Before I do anything with the rod, I'm going to go ahead and get it off my fingers so I don't spread anymore when I try and hold it. Definitely going to have to go wash my hands after this. Now, get this out of the way. That's for big mess stuff. And get this nice, even, clean wipe. There we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. And of course, I managed to pinch the top where there's still some glue coming out on my other hand. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and put glue. We've got the line here so we know how far up to go. I'm going to get the little stick because I like it better. Um, and just kind of coat this up to that line where the cork is going to end. Alright, so I know this seal is going to be tighter. I'm going to try and get a little bit off of this because that's a lot. There's no gaps to fill in except for a little bit in here in the top of the real seat. And let's get the cork on. You know what I do need to do? This real seat needs to be aligned with the spine, which is right there. So I'm glad I caught that. So I've still got my spine mark here and I'm lining up the real seat to the spine mark. And I'm gonna try and get a little bit of this off before it gets to the point of the real seat and makes a mess. And I still managed to make a mess. That's a great thing about crafts. <laughs> you can make a mess and nobody cares. Because sometimes they're supposed to be messy. Alright, that seems to be as tight as it'll go in on that. So... Try and scrape this off again. And then we'll get the uh, set it across this so it doesn't hit. And we'll get the alcohol and clean it up. And the metal wants to spin away. Yeah, it did. Okay. So I gotta make sure I get it out of the um, threads as much as possible. And make sure I didn't spin the real seat. Give it another wipe down here. I'm so excited! Alright. 
So that's going to be number one, all glued and ready to go. And we'll set that aside to dry. And on to number two. We'll go ahead and pull the real seat off. And what I'm going to do here. I don't know what I'm going to do here. <laughs> I'm going to clean off my tooth thing. thing because the handle got some way up on it. I want to make sure I've got as much space without grabbing into the glue as I can. All right, and clean my fingers off again so I don't get it everywhere. And I'll take up a nice little glob. And spread it on all the glue so funny it took me so like the the time frames on things I guess technically that's what I'm talking about like how long it takes to build it up and then like the gluing time frame is like super fast super easy um, uh, it is a little bit difficult to make sure it stays in the camera so I, I do apologize if you're trying to watch closely it's not gonna be that great um, trying to not put too much on the bottom area because I know that it's going to build down as I slide the real seat on. But I do want to make sure the tape is completely coated so it's sealed up pretty good. And I want to fill in a little bit of the gaps between the tape as much as possible. So that looks pretty good. Yep. Put that down and we'll go ahead and put the real seat on. So. I'll just keep spinning it so it gets a nice even coating on the inside. Maybe back this off a little bit, see if we can't get a little bit more up in there. There we go. So I'm trying to keep it tilted so it doesn't build up on top of the real seat as much. Um, and then just keep winding it in. And let it drop off if that's where we need it. There we go, there we go. So it's trying to like drip onto the handle, which I really don't want. Um, let's see, where is my... Mark right there, that's the spine. Really? So, try and scrape this off. That one made a little bit more of a mess. And we'll get the alcohol pad and wipe it off. Once again, I'll make sure that the 
real seat is lined up with the spine. And we get the little one for the top section. This is so messy. Um, I'm also thinking I might have more glue than I needed. I thought I would need a lot since it's for three, and I don't think I've used as much as I was thinking I would. Um, so what I may do is, because I still have my brother's rod that I'm working on, um, I'll go ahead and arbor up and do that real seat as well. The glue um, has a lot of... I say glue. The epoxy has a fairly long working time, so I should be able to get that done. Um, since I've already done all of the measurements and everything, all I need to... Well, I haven't done all the measurements. Um, I need to measure the top cork and then arbor up, and I should be good. But I've done, like, the sanding out and everything. It's just twisting it on in, sliding it down, keeping it angled right. Okay, I'm gonna back this off and actually try and get some of this out before I get it on. Looks like a pretty good seat there and clean off the excess I love easy cleanup stuff and it's so funny because like you'd think um, epoxy or glue that requires two parts and takes so long to dry would be not an easy cleanup but literally you just take a little bit of alcohol and it's clean um, and then alcohol evaporates, so it's faster than water, even, because the water would, you know, need so for, you know, like, the water cleanup glue. Um, so, I don't know. It seems easier to me. You'd think, oh, higher chemicals, more risk, and harder to clean, and whatnot. <laughs> really, I guess technically it could be, but for me, not, not really. I think the sun is, like, hiding behind clouds now, because it just seems to get really dark in here all of a sudden. So, my lighting has vanished. We'll, put, whoop. well, that was beautiful. Okay, make sure this is still lined up. I spun this, so we're going to turn it back. Make sure that's got a nice, good push. And rod number three. Slide that off. Get the epoxy. That was just sad. It jumped off the tongue depressor. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just coat the tape. Go. I'm going to coat the outside of the tape here and fill in the gaps as much as possible. Oh, 
wants to be really thick right there. Good grief. All right. And on with the real seat. This is why I was worried about it being too tight on some of them. Um, they weren't really too tight, but if it was too tight, that first little bit would just be almost impossible once the glue is on there. So we're going to let it drip off the bottom here. It has got a big glob. Lovely. Take the little one. Let's see if we can't fill in up next to the cork there. There we go. Okay, that's it. So it's actually kind of sucking the glue in a little bit because there was a little bit of a gap there. So I'm really happy with that. And the more I spin it, the more evenly it goes in. This one is going to be the cleanest one yet. I think I finally got the hang of it. Three seats in. All right, right there is my spine. Uh oh, well I just got a little bit on my hand, and now I put it on the real seat. So. I'm gonna have some extra cleaning to do now. Make sure it's not gonna get on. And then get it off of here. All right, since that's a rather thick glob, I'm just gonna pull this over. And we'll try and use the back side of this where there's still some alcohol in it to get that cleaned off the rest of the way. That's good. Um, and then where I've got it on the real seat, I do want to get that off before I try and do the next part. Get it on my hands again. And I got it right up here. I'm going to spin this down to make sure it's not on the threads here. Um, and that looks like the real seat has turned, so we'll give it another little spin back. And it's time for the upper part. Looks like I've got some fiber from the pad stuck on this here. I don't want to get that in the glue. And now the cork top. Once again, just spinned on nice and even. wish the lighting was a little bit better because it keeps, I don't know, keeps going dark on me. Maybe, I, well, I'll play with it in a second. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the excess off now before it builds up and gets on top of this. still building 
but what I'm hoping is the excess will shove down in and cover the section on top of the tape where the above the real seat. That's still a lot. Let's just try and get a little bit more out of there. And on down. That one looks used, so we're not going to use that one. lot of glue coming off right there. I had way more squeeze out than I wanted. That should be good. And make sure the real seat's still lined up. And set it aside to dry. That's three out of three. Uh, now since we've got a lot of extra glue, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Um, this was the one for my brother. It's got a slightly bigger reel seat so we might need a little bit more tape than before. Um, but I've already marked here, I just haven't marked the top one where this comes down to. So we'll go ahead and get the marker. And throw a line on the rod up here. And we'll pull this one back off again. All right, and so we don't make a mess out of everything, I'm gonna go ahead and move my glue. Just gonna set it down over here beside me. I'm actually gonna try and space these rods out a little bit while they're drying. Um, the great thing about this glue is it's all internal, um, so I don't have to worry about them touching anything. Uh, my biggest concern would be if the real seat twisted for any reason, which it really shouldn't. Um, I'll just put the real seat facing down so it doesn't get like a weight differential and spin. Um, and we'll arbor up here. There it is. Uh, so this is actually going to be a little bit more arboring than the other one because it is a larger seat. So hopefully we'll be able to get it done fairly quickly and get the glue in there. This will be done with that. So I guess it's story time again. Um, I think I was talking about my parents' pond um, and how they, they're trying to stock it up. We had catfish in there for a little bit. Um, we pretty much killed them when we drained the pond, but we didn't get much of the lily pads out. Um, but once we, like, let it refill in, it's spring-fed. Um, so we did find that there's, it's actually kind of like two springs, um, right, right next to the deep end, uh, where the spring comes in. Um, we had an earthquake, uh, about ten years ago, um, and the plates shifting um, affected the spring so now it's only got one spring instead of the two that were there before 
Uh, so the pond isn't as clean and clear as it was because uh, it's more still. Um, essentially, with the spring feeding, it it was it was actually basically the start of a small creek. Um, the creek runs through our neighbor's property, uh, and they have another spring just down the uh, off the dam down the hill from where the pond is. Uh, they're talking about you know maybe getting like an excavator and digging it out deeper, uh, trying to uncover the spring because they're getting clogged up with the uh, debris from the trees. Uh, when the leaves fall in there in the fall. Um, but essentially the dam is covered in um, trees and, and the root systems that are there can either one weaken the dam or two strengthen the dam and it kind of goes like back and forth one way or the other. Um, if one tree falls the dam is probably done for um, and if we take them all down at once the root structure will probably be done anyway. They'll you know it'll die off and then the dam will get weakened. So we kind of have to be very careful about the dam. So we, we can't really do much. We're clearing out like one of the uphill sides and we're gonna try and dig out into the ground that way. Or they're thinking about it. Um, they have been clearing some of the trees out so less debris falls in and it's mostly pine trees. Uh, so it's not like when the fall comes, it's covered in leaves. Um, but essentially when we go fishing and we catch a We'll say medium-sized fish. Uh, usually it's a bass. It'll be under slot limit because you can't take the slot fish home. Um, and it'll usually be, you know, too small to eat. But it's still fun to catch. And they're, they're taking them home and dropping them in the pond to start stocking it. Um, so now we have, instead of just the catfish, which I think we still do have, um, we have... Um, bluegill and largemouth bass in the pond. Um, this is not a big pond. It's probably got a smaller footprint than most houses. Or about the same size, I guess, maybe. I don't know, like the square footage of it. Um, but it's still fun. We've had some fun with that pond. Um, there's some fun tails and some not so fun tails. Um, it's frozen over completely, like five times uh, when I was still living there and we used to go out and, and play on it uh, so essentially before we could go out we had to take my dad's ice pick and like a, it's actually literally like an, a, I think it's a climbing pick um, and we'd pick through the ice and make sure it was at least four inches deep um, so we couldn't go on the ice unless it was at least four inches thick uh, and it was a lot of fun. We'd go out and play on the ice. Um, there's been times where uh, it wasn't thick enough for us to go out, but we took like a remote control car <laughs> and drove it around on the ice. Um, and that was fun. Uh, but um, I remember this one time. Um, we decided to go swimming in it. And it's not a bad pond. Um, but like, you know, the lily pads, you have to get through all the lily pads to get to the deep end and the lily pads grow in like the nasty, yucky, mucky stuff. Um, so, you know, we, we waited out and, um, we get in the water, <laughs> get to the deep section and, you know, we're playing and splashing around and, um, I think one of us got you know how the fish were eating the bubbles and whatever we were playing. I don't remember what happened, but we all were like, okay, we're out. We're getting out now. And we got out real quick. Um, and what we hadn't realized was that the pond, despite being kind of clear, um, out in the deep section, the, the lily pad section where it was mostly hidden, was full of algae. Um, and <laughs> when we got out of the pond, everything was green. <laughs> so we, we, we didn't swim in the pond again after that. Uh, we had, we had green swimsuits. Uh, we couldn't take them into anything else because <laughs> of the amount of yuck on them. Uh, we did, you know, we did wash them and I think we went swimming in a lake, um, 
nearby lake later oh uh, because it was like not good water and then we didn't wear swimming suits in our pond <laughs> just everything turned green but um there was another time my dad was uh he'd actually been teaching my nieces how to fish this is this has been fairly recent i think about two to three years ago um so my dad was teaching my nieces how to fish and um we were fishing bluegills right at spawn at a little little pond in um in our neighborhood uh so it's kind of public kind of private access because it's only the people that live here that can go there um and it's you know kind of public because anybody that lives here can go there uh and um they'd had a lot of fun they were catching a lot of fish it was another one of those times where they, there was literally a line of people waiting for when i say a line it's just my three nieces but they were all waiting for pop pop to undo the fishing rod and instead of anybody helping my dad because <laughs> he's the one teaching them how to fish and whatnot um, we're helping the other ones that don't have a fish on um cast the line or the one that does have a fish keep it in the water while he's unhooking the other one um and uh filming because obviously this is something that has to be remembered by filming um it was really fun um this is actually my sister's idea um sister and brother-in-law i guess technically for my dad for father's day um, we had lunch at my sister's house and for father's day presents they got him fishing or huts for the girls um, so it was a really cute idea, um, and, and he was so thrilled. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why we're just letting him handle it all. Because it was the same day we just walked down to the pond to fish there. And uh, he got to, you know, teach the girls to fish. At this point, they were like three and four, maybe five years old. Um, they weren't very articulate. Uh, but they were so excited to be fishing. And uh, so I asked Dad after the whole day was done, and he'd had so much fun, I was like, what about your pond? Could they fish there? Okay, that seems like it might be just a little bit loose. But I don't want to put any more on because it feels pretty good. Maybe do like a half an inch. So we took some minnows. Um, my dad <laughs> converted the the utility sink in our basement. It's a two it's a two bin sink. Um, and what he did was he took one side and he just filled it up with water, and he put a filter system in there. And the that bin is now their minnow minnow tank. Um, it's bigger than most fish tanks. It holds, I don't know, like, well, most, like, Walmart-sized fish tanks. Um, I think it holds 50 to 60 gallons. I don't know. It's big. Uh, so when we're not fishing and we have leftover minnows, we take them home and drop them in the sink. And, uh, so he had some minnows in the sink, and I, I was over there, and I was like, so, Dad... Are there still fish in our pond? Do you know if anything survived? Oh, that is good. That's so nice and snug. And he's like, I don't know. Let's go down and test it. Uh, so he goes down. We grab the minnow. Grab a couple of minnows, I think. And we go down to the pond to see if we can catch anything. If there's anything in our pond. Um, anything left in our pond. And... <laughs> He casts this minnow out. Now, he gets the small minnows because they're going to be in his sink and they'll grow. And small minnows are easy to get on hooks and whatnot. So, um, so the minnow's like this long. <laughs> and uh, he casts it out. And the idea is to cast it over the lily pads into the deep section. Um, and it gets hit right away. It just goes whoop, right under. And we're both like, Oh, so there are fish. 
<laughs> so he has to reel it through the lily pads. It gets snagged on a lily pad, and you know, it, you know, when some when when a fishing line gets snagged, it just feels extra heavy. And uh, so he's like reeling in this minnow, 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 fish. <laughs> I don't even know why the fish thought he could get the minnow. <laughs> But it was literally like I have a picture of my dad. He's got the what the f face, like total what the f, because the fish is literally smaller than his hand, and the minnow is sitting beside it. So the whole body of the fish is the same length as the minnow, and then you've got like the whatever how much is the tail that's longer than the minnow. So it's like a minnow is this long, and it's sitting beside the fish because it slid up the line when the fish tried to get it. Couldn't swallow the minnow. It's just it got free. <laughs> the fish is like that long. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, there's fish in the pond, all right. We'll fish him in about three years. <laughs> so I guess that's actually that's about now. So we should probably try and fish the <laughs> fish the pond at my parents. It just was so funny because it was so tiny, and it seemed like it was bigger because it kept getting snagged on the lily pads. So it just felt like a nice, good, heavy fish. <laughs> he gets it in. He's got a lily pad stuck on the line. He gets the lily pad off, and the fish is smaller than the lily pad. Oh, it was it was one of those those I guess it's one of those you had to have been there stories. It was great. Um, that was one of the funniest things that like happened in ages. So, um, I loved it. We're like I, I like I really want to just go down to the pond and get it restocked and get it you know fill it out make it a good pond for fishing. My dad loves fishing, so it'd be really great if you know after a nice long day of work or on a, a kind of chill weekend he could just walk down to the back of the property and fish. Um, but you know I don't I don't live over there anymore and I don't have a lot of access to the tools and stuff that would need. I think it'd be fun to do. I could I like I I kind of have like a base knowledge on how to do it. Uh, the problem is the drainage and the dam, because the dam is covered in trees, so we can't really dig better drainage. Um, right now the drainage is, I think, a four-inch pipe that sticks right up out of the bottom. Hi, kitty! I hear you! I left the door open. This is the first time one of them's decided to join me. What you doing, bud? You gonna come up? You come say hi? Come here! No. I don't think he likes the smell of the glue. Which reminds me, if he is coming up, I should put that on the table because he knows better. Hi, you. Come here. Come say hi. Come say hi over here. You're going under the table. Nobody can see you there. No, don't don't rub on the rods. No, stop. What the heck, cat? Ah. What is on your whiskers? Did you catch? You walked in a spider web. You goofball. Spider webs are fun. Spider webs are nasty. I love the cats. So easily distracted. I'm sorry. Now he's going to attack the end of the fishing rod. It's a pole. It's moving. I'm going to hit it. This one has the ferrules in place. So, like, it's extra shiny. <laughs> You coming over? You want to sit on my lap? Come here. No, not on... Okay. Yeah, sure. Sit on my footrest. That'll work. I forgot what I was talking about. Fishing, probably, because fishing rods. Now I'm thinking about cats. So, I'm actually thinking about, you know, fishing this earlier this year. Um, we were trying, we, we have not, we did the, I guess the weather has been kind of funky this year. Um, so we haven't found the right time to go crappie fishing. We just never got out there at the right time. Um, my dad caught a really good bass, largemouth bass. Um... So the slot limit is one fish in the slot limit now. Um, you can keep one. 
Um, and this fish, like, was right inside the limit. Uh, I think he was 15 inches. And uh, the slot limit where we were, we were fishing was uh, 15 inches. So it was, like, right on the line. So we put it in the bucket to take home to put in their pond. Because that's what we do with the slot fish. We don't go home and eat them. We take them home and use them to stock their pond. Um, but that was just us testing the water to see if there was a good day. Um, we've taken my nieces out fishing twice this year. Um, and that's part of what prompted the, the reel making, the rod making, um, was trying to find rods that they could use instead of the little, um, I'm going to say Zebco. I don't think Zebco was the company that made them, but um, it's just like the general bait casting ones. Um, bait casting El Cheapo two and a half foot kids rods that they had which are the ones that my sister and brother-in-law got them for uh, Father's Day and uh, you know the girls know how to use those so we're this year uh, we took them out and we're trying to find rods that would work for them um, and that they could use uh, for fishing uh, a little bit more longer term or at least for the year uh, to get into the um, the crappie season and the first day we went out it was really slow I don't I don't know that the girls really enjoyed themselves because there just wasn't fish um, the second day we went out um, was not a crappie day we just weren't catching crappie but we caught a lot of we caught a fair amount of fish um, and we were mostly catching um, bluegill or sunfish and um, Uh, white bass or rock bass. I don't know if there's that much of a difference between them. White bass and rock bass, I think they're kind of the same thing. Because um, my dad uses both. Wow, that's looser than I thought. Alright, he uses both terms. So, we were fishing. There's the end there. Okay. And uh, my niece had, my dad had a rod that was all set up. It was his fishing rod. So it's like a six and a half foot rod. My niece is maybe three and a half feet tall. So like the rod is huge to her. And uh, so we finally get the, the smaller rod that's like the, the kid size rod set up to go over. And I can't remember which rod it was on because I had just gone over with the kids' rod um, to, you know, help her. I was like, here, let's trade. We'll pull the old rod, the big rod in, and you can use the little rod that we got set up for you that will be easier for you to handle. And I think it was the, the big adult rod. Like, as soon as I... No, I think it was the kids' rod. I hadn't even finished getting the adult rod in. So I was trying to reel it in. Um, and get it out of the way so the lines wouldn't get tangled. But I cast the little one out and then handed it to her and traded. Um, and almost as soon as it hit the water, she got a hit. And, like, this rod <laughs> is bending in half. Uh, that's probably an exaggeration. It was, it was just really bent. Um, and she's reeling it, reeling it, reeling it. And it's, um, I can't tell what she's fighting. I'm not really in. I, yeah, like, it, the rod tip isn't um, actively bouncing, but it is, you know, got a little bit of fight to it or something. Okay, that's too tight now. So I'm encouraging her, you know, roll it, reel it in, reel it in, reel it in. And she gets it in, and it is a catfish. She got a catfish that is just massive. Um, I think she had fun. She was really excited. The grin on her face is just huge. Um, so that, that was one of those really exciting things, days for her, I guess, because she got to keep, get, catch that catfish. I think I have a picture. Um, let me see if I can't do this without causing trouble. Let's see. All right. 
So I'm cutting off her face a little bit. <laughs> this is my niece holding up the catfish still on the line. You can see it's as long as her legs. <laughs> She's like stretching up as tall as she can, trying to hold this fish up as high as she can. Uh, arm is shaking. She's got the rod in one hand and the line in the other to hold this fish up. <laughs> her grin. I'm not going to show her face because I don't want to, you know, get in any trouble with my sister. I don't have permission to do that. Her grin is so big, but that catfish was huge. So, yeah. <laughs> the, I've got another picture here. Oh, no, it's not going to work. Never mind. She's, she's doing this little thing where she's like, I want to touch it. And you can see her curling her hands up and like looking away. But she's also like trying to lean forward at the same time and look at this catfish. Because uh, she's like, I got a catfish. I got a fish. So she's all excited about it and trying to see what's going on with it. So um, that, that was an eventful day. They got, they got another bass. Uh, some large mouth that we ended up taking home and putting into the pond. Um, we let the girls actually release it. So we had them pull it out of the bucket and drop it into the pond. So we've got a video of that. Um, so we've got several videos of them fishing now and uh, it's a lot of fun. I might see if maybe I can uh, get permission from my sister and uh, we'll maybe put those up on YouTube. I think before I do that, I should probably start putting, like, stream highlights up on YouTube. Um, and then maybe some of the other stuff um, that I've done. Um, I was doing a video when I was building my computer um, earlier this year. Um, and then I, I just got frustrated trying to get everything all set up and then work. Because <laughs> all I could do was record. Um, and I was using my, my phone, so I'm pretty sure I, I got rid of it or deleted a lot of the stuff. Uh, just because it was frustrating me. Uh, so, I don't know if I still have that, but... I know I do have my YouTube and I don't have anything on it. Because <laughs> I haven't done it. Well, actually, no, I think I have a... No, nope, I don't have anything uploaded to it. No, I do have one. I have a fight. Uh, when I was playing Valheim, I was waiting for my friends to get on, so I was just exploring, trying to get materials, and I found a troll... Um, and I had to fight it by myself. And, uh, so I've got, like, the troll fight. Uh, so, that was, that's, that's up on my YouTube, just the troll fight. Um, I thought it was really fun. Um, I have probably watched it more time than anybody else has viewed it, just because it was so much fun to do. Um, someone told me, um, if you enjoy watching it, other people will enjoy watching it, too. Uh, same thing as if you enjoy making it, other people will enjoy watching you make it. Uh, so as long as I'm having fun, I think everybody else that is that watches is having fun too. Um, but I've gone back and watched some of my stuff before, and I I find it like I I tend to not talk enough. I think I think, um, but I do find it engaging because I I do I monologue, um, and that's part of the reason why I decided to start streaming because. Um, even, even before I was streaming, I would monologue my game stuff. Um, I, my poor brother, um, <laughs> sitting up with his computer right next to mine. Um, he, I, he has so much patience. Um, helped me get set up with the games and teaching me how to play and, you know, getting me in into teams with his friends. Now I'm starting to, you know, get out there a little bit more and, and do it on my own. And, uh, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. No, that's one of the cats yowling. We're up here! Anyway, um, I'm having a lot of fun, but I will say way more than streaming the video games, um, the rod making is, it's, again, it's one of those things that's near and dear to me, and I, I love it, because I get to do it, and I, I, I was so excited when I discovered the, the makers and crafters, actually I was looking for makers and crafters, or, 
um, like a crafter stream. I was trying to see if there was a crafting stream. Hi, bud. <laughs> you just had but the table. Does that feel good? Come here. Come here. Say hi to the camera. Look, right up here. Come here. Come here. There we go. There we go. Come here. Hi. There we go. This is Geralt. This is my buddy. He's he's my little friend. He's the he's the more talkative of the two. Um, I don't know if you can hear him talking. He's purring nice and loud, but I've got the music going, so I'm assuming you're hearing more of that than the actual talking that he does, because he he talks and he's all lonely right now. So. <laughs> Have you not seen a mirror before? I know you've seen a mirror. He's just rubbing on the table and staring at the mirror on my dresser. <laughs> There's something over there. I see another cat. I love this table. That cat loves that table. Kitty kitty. Wait, hey, knock it off. Don't eat that. You're so weird, cat. So I'm thinking maybe when I'm done with the fishing rods, I might do a makers and crafters uh, with uh, some candle making. Um, I haven't done candle making in a little bit, but I did kind of promise a friend of mine that I would send him some blueberry cheesecake scented candles. And I actually do have to make those for him. Yeah, that's still a little bit loose. We'll do a little bit more. I'm not as worried about the middle one. It's more for stability than anything else. So I'm not like, it doesn't have to be as tight because the glue will fill in a little bit. Um, but I, I do want it to be pretty, pretty close to the same level. So, yeah, I think I've got about another half hour left to the normal stream time. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go beyond or not. I kind of want to, uh, just because I haven't gotten any rod winding done. And like I said, their birthdays are next month. Uh, so I got to get as much done as I can uh, to get it as quickly as I can. Uh, the rod that's almost finished is actually the niece whose birthday is in November. Uh, so I got a head start on the wrong rod. Um, that was mostly because it was a individual kind of rod. So it's like, I had all the parts, but it was different from the other rods. And I don't want to, well, I do kind of want to, what I wanted to do was like a copy paste kind of a thing for the twins and their older sister. Um, so that they wouldn't look at it and go, but hers is this much longer. This one has that color handle or kind of thing. Um, the difference is going to be the thread binding, and they are going to be unique. Um, I'm going to use the girls' um, favorite colors and whatnot to try and get that as close as possible to, you know, to make them unique. And the rods are different colors, so that's obviously what's going to happen. But um, I wanted to give them the core candles more than I wanted to do the EVA. Um, right now, what I'm going to try and do is shave off just a little bit of the cork here um, because it's not sitting evenly. When I put the real seat on, um, it's kind of not leveled. So I'm going to do this a couple of times, um, trying to get rid of some of the gapos. 